or anything. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just it's, she's along for the ride. She really just came for the buffet. Um, if you listen to what the buffet has to say. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably going to hang out with people for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, eat some food and and just kind of hang out with people. Uh, probably with Bright, Norlai, and Selene the most, because who is it do I know? <laughs> uh, there's, I'm sure there's other people here. I, I don't know if you'd know them. Probably some friends of your mom uh, and, and even your dad, who uh, your dad was not able to, to make it here, but probably you're, you have people that have come along and like, oh, I remember when you were, you know, X years old. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're talking about things probably because this is also a wedding. There's a lot of, uh, embarrassing stuff, uh, that, you know, that the tales of, you know, whenever, uh, I don't know, like they were eating dinner over, uh, over at your mom and dad's and you came out of the, you know, you came out of the, uh, you know, the, the bathroom there, like, you know, pants around your ankles, just like crying, like, oh, I pooped it, it hurt or something along those lines. <laughs> And, you know, just the tales that, of course, are going to get brought up at a wedding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of tales you tell at weddings. Well, I mean, we don't have we, we don't have uh, embarrassing like uh, kid or baby photographs in this time period. So, no, uh, it's it, it's all just the, you know, a word of mouth of the things that you uh, you bring up to Raz the couple. Uh, although unfortunately, uh, you're the only one with this sort of known uh, known background. As Celine is, Celine has parents somewhere, presumably other people, but uh, that she hasn't been in contact with for many years at this point. Yeah, so it's a lot of it is on you to uh, to carry the burden of uh, of uh, remembering tales and. You know, things that probably will bring some tears to your eyes. I, these are personal things. I'm not glazing over the emotional. But it's just, mm. we're talking about the small details of your life that I, as a DM, don't know. You know, they weren't, mm. uh, you know, they, they, they weren't written on your character sheet like, oh, well, when I was 10, I did whatever. And, no, but anyway, yeah. to it, it is brought up. Maybe the, the it, it brings you some, uh, some ache uh, in your heart that uh, your dad can't be here. Um... Or just reflecting that here you are, you know, you're getting married. Uh, maybe you thought that your parents always would uh, would stay together, but here they are apart. Uh, but your dad did leave you something, so it's not like he abandoned your mom. He didn't abandon you. Uh, you know, he left you something that he had been working for to make sure. In fact, he even entrusted your mom uh, to at least let you know, like, hey, it's with the stash. Wink. Um and uh, and so he had uh, left you something before he'd gone to sign up for Operation Welcome, Matt. Uh, your mom is there. Of course, she's moved on, and she has a new bow. Um, but they're happy. Uh, the, the, everyone here seems to be pretty happy uh, for you and Celine. They're asking a lot of questions, though, about Celine. Like, oh, you know, about your parents, and there's going to be... Unfortunately, we don't have lethality to sort of uh, fill in, but there's, mm. there's going to be a lot of blanks probably, you know, in regards to, Oh, who's your parents? Uh, Oh, what does your, uh, you know, uh, w what's your profession? You know, people, especially cause your, your mom knew a lot of people in the business community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, questions that are, uh, maybe a little bit blunt, uh, you know, it, uh, to you Mordecai, like, well, they're not, they're not saying that she's a, a gold digger. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know she do she doesn't work. Uh, staying at home, you know, is uh, a fine, it's a fine common practice. Uh, you know, of course, the subject of kids is always going to get brought up. Um, and uh, We don't even know if it's possible. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> You've probably said that for like the 10th the time already, but there's more than 10 people on the boat, so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you you get all of the questions, uh, but there's a lot of food, a lot of distractions. There's uh, other boats, of course, that are passing by. Uh, they see the uh, the decorations 
that uh, your mom and especially apparently Lucius was able to pull some uh, some strings with other merchants in town and was able to get you some nice displays of things. Mm -hmm. um, so you are getting some uh, hoots and hollers. I mean, obviously there was those rude uh, Shadahar teens on their uh, sort of like personal speedboat equivalent of an airship. Uh, that yep. buzzed by. We're still running everything. from a, a flock of bats right now. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, Norlai did unleash a, a flock of uh, dire bats to chase after them, uh, which did work. Uh, they uh, they tore out of there. Um. Uh, but uh, it would seem that there's. Uh, I mean, maybe besides someone having overindulged and needing to uh, lean over the railing, uh, it's. Uh, it's a fun time on the on the barge, uh, and I will. The, the fickle gods have interfered with you enough, so I'll make sure that there's the rest of your journey, at least back to port, is safe. Um. In comes a thousand bits. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere. Yeah, you got to get uh, back to port sometime. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that that's probably the next thing. Is like. After, after everything's kind of settled down and people are looking like they're gonna want to go, we're gonna probably wrap it up. You know that saying? I'm saying she's a gold digger. You know what that means is that you can do better. And dwarves have exactly the same saying, but the etymology is completely different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he a gold digger? Excellent. <laughs> A great profession, <laughs> honorable, noble. Everyone should. Everyone's goal should be to to, to dig for gold. <laughs> but yeah, it'd probably head back to port once and once everybody starts like like going off the boat, then we'll just we'll follow to to do that too. So. I guess it should be noted that also instead of a prospective spouse, they're a prospecting spouse. Eh. So, but here are the you, you all come for the culture, right? Which is what you get doses and doses of in this game. <laughs> uh, all right, so the uh, the the sun the sun is setting. Everything is beautiful. Uh, the the stars are starting to uh, to twinkle and come out, and the lights of the city. Um, as, uh, as you've been out for a while, of course, remember, we're at the height of summer, so uh, it's maybe it's almost 10 o'clock by the time that you're getting back. So the sun's probably b uh, beneath the horizon, but there's still light in the sky a little bit, uh, orange clouds and uh, stars coming out. Um, ba -ba -ba. So uh, I guess just subtract the sun and add a partial moon. But here's the scene as uh, as the, the trading barge uh, decorated with flags and tents and other things to make it look not quite like a barge um, is uh, is being uh, partially paddled, partially uh, um, uh, driven by poles by the um, by the Kyberners mm -hmm. uh, that Gaspard had brought. Uh, but you uh, you come back and ba -ba -da bum. Uh, all the crowd was on the ship, so, I mean, it's not like anyone's waiting for you to come back. Uh, but there's there's a lot of goodbyes, you know, people sneaking, uh, you know, like, I don't know, a bunch of grapes into their purse to take with them for later. Uh, yeah, no one's going to eat it anyway, or, oh, what if the birds come back? You know, things like that. You know, the use. Yeah, you know, it's taking packets of sugar and the salt and pepper shakers and like the hand towels. <laughs> All right, now that you're vulnerable to my attacks again, what are we doing? Uh, well, since it's nighttime, <laughs> it's probably a good time to go to bed. Okay. Uh, back to the orphanarium it is. Unless you were wanting to go elsewhere. I don't think there's anywhere else to go, really. Um, well, I mean, you can always get a private room at a tumble bunch. You could go there. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, you Celine could go to the Celine. wild children. Celine would probably insist on having some private and alone time with Mordecai. I mean, it's, it's more romantic than the construction site. Even though you do have your own room at the construction site. True. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's probably going to insist that that they get some private and alone time without interruptions because that's what she'd want. Yeah, I mean, we have too much jackhammering going on at the construction site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so. before or after they retire? Mm. <laughs> Who knows? Because that would just be rude, right? They're trying to sleep, and so if someone's... Da -da 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 oh, wait. That was what you're talking about, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. On the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Even a PG-13, folks. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wouldn't it just be P13 for portents? You, you don't need guidance. You don't even cast guidance. You, you, you have portents. You're just P13. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, then, uh, we, have, uh, we have Mordecai and... Uh, Mordecai and Selene... Uh, are going to uh, retire to uh, a more comfortable place. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to leave Bright and Norali. Uh, Norali, you of course could have had a plus one on the barge too if you had. Wished. I did have a plus one. Yes. Um, so, uh, do you two want to retire as well? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll be going to his place. Okay, <laughs> so. See you tomorrow, right? Hey, good night. Hmm. I feel like I should do something. What? What? Mm -hmm. I wonder what? Uh, Gaspard and the Kyberners are walking uh, past you, uh, back towards the Orphanarium. Oh, I thought we had already gotten there. Oh, well, I mean, this, uh, at some point, you know, if you're there and you're going to split off, then maybe they're just returning, but... Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know what to, to say. If he comes up to me, I won't avoid him, but I also won't go looking for him. Uh, yeah, so he, uh, he'll walk the up. The large dog. He'll give you a, uh, you know, he'll he'll cross his arms and and he'll he'll look at you sternly and then just sort of. <sighs> that was well played back there, Bright. Well, thank you. We. I wouldn't want to let you down. Admittedly, it had been a uh, it had been a while since I got to engage in that kind of. And that kind of fun, you know, it just, it's, it scratches an itch that it's just, it's difficult for, it's difficult for those, uh, yeah, the big people don't people understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cultural. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they're pretty good. They're my, you know, Mordecai and, and Norlai and Selena are, are my friends and they're pretty good. They've, you know, it's, it's not exactly the same as being, you know, at home. But they, they understand, and they they know what what things mean. Maybe not always inherently, but they, they figure it out. I have to hand it to you, Bright, and, and just coming to know all the things that you've been through with them, you have to have amazing patience to put up with tall people like that. Oh, it's not so hard. Your whole journey oh. just must have been nothing but just misunderstandings and jokes and... And things that they, they don't... Just, it had to have been irritating to you. It's funny you should say that. I think it's actually more irritating to them. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. But, I mean, no, they, they don't know when to play a joke and when not to. But that doesn't mean they're hard to, to put up with. Sometimes they're just a little boring. That's all. But not in a bad way. Oh no, no, of course. Uh, a lot of them. I, I mean, I, 
don't need to tell you, but they're they're excellent to, to play off of. You know, when it comes to making jokes or pulling a prank or just trying to liven up life. Yeah, it's always good to have a have a good tall man to play off of. Well, anyway, I'm br uh, bright. It was nice all the same, and I'll tell you, I uh, I mean it wholeheartedly when I say that for being half of an octopus back there, you wore it well. Well, thank you. At, at least, at least you turn, didn't turn the top half of me into an octopus. That would have been not as fun. Have a good night, Bright. And he, like, he's just sort of like laughing and like he scratches his head a little bit. All right, come on. You all have to, you got some work to do. Come on, come on. And uh, he orders the Kyverners uh, over to the Orphanarium because they don't do a lot of loud work at night, but they don't necessarily have a need to stop working, uh, which has been great for your all's budget because you, you have hired, uh, you know, actual mortal, like flesh and blood people, uh, but they can get some stuff done, especially like the heavy lifting. They can set up the, infrastructure that the uh, the living, breathing, you know, metabolizing folk uh, can add the details to uh, during the course of the day. It sounds almost like it's a derogatory term. Oh, those metabolizers. Yeah, those metabolizers. Uh, <laughs> so, how close are we to the, like, to the waterfront? You would probably be a uh, eh, ten minute walk. I uh, saw so a little less of a jog, or uh, through magical shenanigans, even less. Mm, teleporting is always kind of awkward. It is, uh, yeah. So... Mm, okay, so... I can't do this tonight, but I've there's something that I'll try to do tomorrow instead, because I don't have the right spells. Okay. Um... There's a, uh, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, th there is a secret passage that is leading to the waterfront, uh, because it, if you, if I do recall, you and Norlai did actually pay for secret passages in your waterfront. Oh, yeah. Uh, we want all the secret passages. But the They're one, the, fun. The, the one secret tunnel to go toward the, to the waterfront isn't complete yet, so. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, and, and th that's more of a, a Gaspard custom, because, like, you're, you're trusting him to keep the secret, but also do a good job. Yeah, no, I know, I know we can, we can trust him to keep the secret. Um, it's just, uh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I want to conjure up a, uh, a, uh, a small water elemental. Because I still have, I still have conjure elementals. Sure. Sure. And so that lasts for about an hour. Okay. So I'm going to conjure up. Some kind of small and harmless water elemental. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I want to send the water elemental to the ocean to look for an octopus. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it will have just about half an hour to find an octopus. If it doesn't find one, that's life. If it does find one, I want it to bring it back. Okay. Um, well, do you have any portents remaining for the day? I do. I haven't used any portents. Um, do you have a particularly favorable one wherein, in a reality, this uh, water elemental is guaranteed to find a, an octopus? I have both a very good portent and a very bad portent. I have one of each. Okay. So maybe I can combine them to, like, increase the odds. I have a 19 oh, okay. and a 2. So make it very bad for the octopus to hide and very good for your water elemental to uh pretty much yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Uh so as as you're uh as you're in your room, uh you know, there's uh you, you have this uh you have this need for an octopus and uh, wouldn't you know that reality seems to align itself in your favor. Uh as uh Within uh, within that half hour, uh, I mean, more towards the end. Also, Laws, thank you very much for the re-up. Um, there's a bloop at your door. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a water elemental with a octopus just sort of 
flipping around inside of it. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, it kind of reaches I'm gonna... out a tentacle towards you. Yeah, hello. Hello, little octopus. So, um, I don't know, is the octopus cute enough for me to use my talk to animals? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you are forcing. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, uh, is it one of those you, uh, those little double double uh, octopuses that have the little ear flaps? <laughs> yeah, and you're you're confident in your interior design, and it's it's changing its colors to match. So you have a very cute room. So the octopus is shifting colors to try and okay. match. Okay, so, yeah, you pick. have an adorable little octopus in a uh, water elemental aquarium right now. Uh, okay. It just sort of reaches out, and you want to talk to it. Yeah, I do. Okay, so hello, little octopus. So here's here's how this is gonna work. Okay, you're you're my you're gonna go to a friend of mine, and he's not gonna hurt you. He's just going to basically he's just going to laugh at you, and then he's gonna let you go. So I'm going to give you a little bucket with water that you can live in and be safe for just a little while, and when it's all done. What what do you eat, little octopus? Do you eat like fish or or is it like bugs? What's what's your thing? Uh, little mussels. Oh, okay. So I don't think I have any of those for you, but I'm gonna have my friend the water element. He'll go find some for you. Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> so I may have to re-up the spell on the minor elementals, but that's okay. I have plenty of spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, go find go find some some mussels for my my little octopus friend. And when they're when you find them, don't take them here. Take them over to Gaspard. So, and I'm gonna write up a little note that says, "Here you go. Maybe this will make your spell work better next time." <laughs> and then, P.S. He's my friend. Don't hurt him. <laughs> 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 All right, so you send a, uh, a rejuvenated elemental out to go get some snacks. Uh, of course, uh, there's plenty of buckets uh, as well for your octopus. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm assuming a bucket of water is not hard to come by. No, no. Uh, All right, so yeah, your your plan uh, your plan uh, does succeed. Uh, a uh, a good handful of uh, of bivalve shellfish are collected uh, you have a bucket full of seawater uh, you have an octopus you have a water elemental uh, you have a note that you've clearly composed and thought about um, and it's time to leave this uh, do you want them to go inside of Gaspard's room or what? um I don't know that they can get it open necessarily I guess I could I got knock prepared <laughs> Could be a little noisy, but that would that would do the trick. <laughs> that would do the trick for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's a construction site. I'm sure people are used to hearing oh. loud bangs. Ooh, all right. Hey, I've, <laughs> I've played mage. I love coincidental magic. I'm okay with that. <laughs> so when that happens, we'll just sneak the little little octopus and the little note inside with the oh, with the octopus snacks, and then that'll. Okay. It'll be that, so I'll just tell the octopus, I'll, he'll he'll come in, he'll he'll see you, he'll probably laugh at you, and then he'll let you go. Okay. Um. All right. You uh, you do uh, you do knock. However, it would seem that Gaspard's not in his room. His room was locked, but he's not in the room. Okay. Well. A knock is a knock is a knock. Yep. Hey, it's unlocked. It's open. Yeah. I mean, you can. Everything is still prepped because you can. You know, you can still set it up. Uh, yeah. But he he might be out like on a on a walk or doing some planning or something. Um, yeah. That's fine. At this and moment, we'll, he's not there. We'll just we'll just lock the door behind us. Okay. As we we go out. Um, okay. That's all. All right. You're going back to your room? Yeah. I just wanted to to leave him a little gnome style gift. All right. Um
you, uh... You go to sleep. Unless you don't sleep. Though I imagine you do. Yeah, I'm ready to, to sleep. I don't have anything else to do today. There's a... There is a... A loud knock on your door. And by that I mean the magic spell. Oh, how interesting. Uh, Do I have time for a, for a short rest? Uh, yes. You, you, have, you have a short rest, not a full, or not a long rest. Uh, the door is unlocked, and, um... The... It's opened with a uh, rather irksome looking uh, with a rather irksome looking uh, Gaspard who is holding a bucket of water that might have spilled? He looks like he's partially covered in salt water. And there is an octopus uh, who is just finishing crawling up the side of his head uh, to <coughs> perch atop it. And his his eyebrow is just twitching uh, as he is looking he's looking into your room uh, and uh, he tells you I didn't hurt it but I am here to give this back to you right? didn't didn't you get along I thought you'd be friends I you seem to be covered in salt. I was okay with the, the scattered shells. I thought maybe, oh, I open my door, crunch, crunch, aha, okay, it's the standard. Uh, you know, you make noise, you scare someone uh, walking in. I was okay, almost slipping and falling and probably breaking my neck on the water that was on the floor. Because I get it, you know, the classic... Water topples down on someone, although no, that, that's it was just supposed to be a little octopus in a bucket that you would see. In, uh, oh, say, the octopus might have been in the bucket at one point in time, but the octopus was in my jack suit and it was twitching. <laughs> can can an octopus operate a jack suit? Apparently, so. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that for later. I'm sure that'll come in handy to know. <laughs> I'm all for discovery, but that was a little much. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Do you need me to come help you clean up your, your little apartment? I'm happy to help. It wasn't supposed to make a mess. It was just supposed to be a little bucket with an octopus in it. That's I all. had no idea that octopi could just crawl out of their aquatic environments and just crawl around and do other things. Well, they can, but they're not supposed to be able to operate jack suits. I didn't know about that part. I... I didn't know either. I'm sure that there's some sort of beneficence to humanity, blah, 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 you know that all, the rigmarole. But right now, I, I legitimately could have died. I don't know what that thing... I didn't know that could happen, let alone what it would do. But it, it could interface with something like its arms were twitching. The suits. How many arms did the suit have? Well, it has the two. Well, it's a good thing it didn't have eight. Well, only inside of it. <laughs> anyway, okay. you can have this back. Uh, I appreciate yeah. the offer to clean, but I need to... I, I'll, I'll just press the digitate it away and take care of things. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that happened. It wasn't supposed to go wrong like that. Oh, I sincerely appreciate the effort, but not the outcome. Okay. He, like, having vented, uh, like, especially because in, in this octopus is just sort of like, bloop, 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 just sort of pulsing on the top of his head. Um, just like almost like the, the vein in the side of his yeah. neck when he was very upset. Um, he, he just... It's not also a brain slug, is it? It's just an octopus. Yeah, it's just an octopus. <laughs> He's not brain slug. Uh, okay. 
that you know of. Standard issue DM statement. Um, uh, but uh, you know, so he he puts this out out there and just uh, takes a moment as he as he says that he at least appreciated the effort, and he just he can't help but laugh, which is causing this octopus to just jiggle and wobble around uh, on his noggin, and I. Hang on. Gets a mage hand and just uh, gets it to let like pull it off with a little bit of a comical like it's attached to his skin. Plops it down in the bucket. Right. You know, <laughs> I may have grumped back there because indeed I felt for my life. <laughs> but I guess that means I have a life to live and I should be grateful. And in all honesty. It's been too long. It's been too long since I've had something like this happen. I just... Getting back to what we had talked about before, and... Well... You know, sometimes I just... I don't stop. I don't let things sink in. I don't... I work just to try and avoid... Looking at how crappy stuff can be lately. And... I guess given, getting a forced break like that is... Well... I did feel alive and it made me appreciative of that. And of the fact that there's someone who, who cares as well. So... Yeah, I, uh... I, I want to say thank you, Bright. You, you've uh, you've given me a lot to think about and a lot to laugh about as well. Arguably more important. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm I'm sorry it went wrong. I mean, well, I think sometimes that's why gnomes live so long, so we have enough time to look back on all the things that went wrong and laugh at them. Well, as far as I'm concerned. We're still good. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, he he walks forward. Uh, he's like hug. Okay. Ready with my saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm gonna need a wisdom saving throw. From you, I knew that was coming. It's okay. Twenty-one. Ah, oh, boo. <laughs> Actually, wait. It, uh, you're uh, you get advantage, right? Because you're a, you're a gnome on a magical effect. Yeah. Oh, so if that, it's a, if it's a spell, yeah. Yeah, it's a spell. All right. So you get your critical green twenty-five. Um. Uh, he gives you a hug, and for a moment, I don't know. There's just like I don't know. A little tingle goes through your body. Um, he, uh, uh, he seems to have a big smile on his face, but it, it kind of turns it, like, he, he looks at you, uh, and he's like, oh, well, thank you, Bright, and he turns. Um. Can I make an arcana check or anything to see what he tried to do? Sure. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen? Uh, yep, yeah, th that'll be enough. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll make that a twenty-two. Uh, oh, be okay. Because of uh, the fact that uh, again, it for a moment it partially uh, it partially took hold. Um, but uh, you, uh, a as he gives you that hug and he, he looks you over, he seems a little disappointed and uh, like, but only for the briefest of moments. He turns and leaves, wishes you a good night, and uh, your tail flicks uh, for a second, and you're like, wait a minute, I don't have a tail. Uh, at least not that I've told anyone. Uh, and you have, uh, you have, like, a big bushy squirrel tail before it just sort of magically, like, fades away, and you go back to being, uh, 100% bright and not a squirrel. <laughs> I wonder if he knows that squirrels are one of my favorites. <laughs> I wonder if you remember that story off from, like, session 10. <laughs> it's, uh, maybe he was giving you a gift. But he seemed disappointed uh, all the same. 
Uh, yeah. That, uh... <laughs> He's going to have to come up with some better tricks because his... my spell save is too good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but when you're resistant to magic, that just leaves stuff like stabbing you or other physical interactions. But he doesn't have to stab me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a prank, stab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he can, you know, put a, he can short sheet my bed or something. <laughs> There's no saving throw for that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as a gnome, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Just like, oh, this is snuggly. <laughs> uh, so you are, you're left uh, in your room with a uh, bucket of salt water and a small octopus. Um, okay. Well, um, little octopus, yeah. um, I don't know if I can communicate this much to it, because it's not like Piggy Sue, right? But Yeah. You get its attention. <laughs> yeah. So, how did you, how did you know how to operate the jack? You know, the little robot you were in. Moved my arms. Oh. Could you, like, do things with it? Uh, felt weird. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. Huh. Was it fun, at least? I could eat it. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. It's definitely not something for eating. It's more for playing. Okay. I'm going to send you back home now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your little sojourn onto the land. Um, and I'm glad that you came through okay. So, yeah, it was tasty. Okay. This, this octopus is, has worn out its welcome. <laughs> So, we'll conjure up the water element and take him back to the ocean. Okay. <laughs> they should have, like, catapult at the couple blocks out to just have it splash down in the water. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, so you conjure the water elemental. Um, uh, the, uh, the, octopus, uh, the octopus is in it. Um, make a... <laughs> when the octopus is inside... Uh, this is going to be an insight. 20. Ooh. So you, you put the octopus inside the water elemental, and it's it's reaching around again. Uh, kind of like, you know, it reached out the first time, like the little tentacle went outside the water to, like, try and boop you. Um, yeah. But when it's inside, it's, it's like probing around. It's like it's trying to feel because it's inside this water elemental. Uh, and it, like, it turns, but then it goes back, and uh, it it just seems to be experimenting inside hmm. the water elemental. How interesting. Little Octopus, do you have a name? Uh... It makes a weird kind of squelching sound. Okay, there we go. That that's works. a cute name. Wow, I didn't know you speak, speak the language. Uh, <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> um, I may come looking for you again. You seem more interesting than the usual octopus. Okay. Okay, well, have a nice rest of your life. Um, if I don't see you again, and if I do, then I'll be sure to greet you by name, Mr. Bring food, please. Okay, I will. Okay. Shoo, shoo, uh, go it, off. It, it kind of shout, it shouts out like, forward, and the elemental doesn't move. And then it, oh, it that, looks disappointed. That only works on jacks. Elemental, um, take him, take, is it, is it a he or a she? It's probably a he. Take him back to the, to the ocean now and let him go in the ocean. Whoop. And it starts bobbing off. And you were left in your room. 
Okay. Uh, well, I don't have an arcane eye handy right now. So... I guess that's enough for me for now. Okay. But I made a new friend with an octopus, and... <laughs> and Gaspar will certainly remember tonight for a while, so that's good. Okay, we're done. Um, then, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, you finish a long rest. You awaken in the morning to study whichever spells that you think you're going to need for the day. Norla, you don't have to worry about that because you just get whatever. You have magic. You're, you are a magical girl. Uh, so yes. you wake up. <laughs> You have whatever, uh, whatever. Practice. I have exactly the spells I need. Yes, exactly. At all times, you have exactly the spells that you need. Um, but yeah, uh, you wake up, and um, um, <coughs> Selene and Mordecai, you will eventually, at some point in time, uh, you'll have a nice, sumptuous breakfast left outside your room uh, for room service. Um. The, the day is all of yours in your various capacities. Uh, and if not the day, then I don't know, how, however long you want to get together, implement a plan, do something in the background, but you all have survived another night. What would you like to do? So when Mordecai and Selene arrive to find Norland Bright, a, a bit of a thought has struck Mordecai. The reason that we can't find Cypher is likely because he's got something going on with him. With Because you know how we couldn't contact each other when Selene and I were in the desert, right? Right. I think something like that might have happened to him. As a thought. That's certainly possible. Mm. I don't know how we would go about finding him otherwise because he probably would have got gooped or something by Shona yeah. Earth. Is Norla here too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do the two of you have any particular ideas for today? Like where we're going to be going? What we're going to be doing? We should probably make our way to the volcano soon. Yeah. I can summon the birds and we can fly a bit. We'll probably call Selter to see if she can pick us up. We should, we, we should probably not call Selter right now. Yeah, she may be upset we didn't invite her to the wedding. She's probably still mad. <laughs> I mean, she's going to be mad either way because Selene's here. Yeah, but is this the best time to ask for a favor, though? Well, we. Otherwise, how are we gonna get there? Birds. 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 Yeah, you know how we got we got from the mountain here. With a little flying carriage thingy. Yeah, but there's no. Yeah, but there's no stop between here and the yeah, volcano. It's, it's too far to to fly, probably. Mm. Well, when we get to the water, I can summon. <coughs> uh. Hmm, what's, what's thin water yet? So, I know an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I could say an octopus. There's There's been a lot of octopuses lately. Though he wasn't very big, and he might not be able to carry us the whole way. <laughs> well, we can at least fly to the coast on the other side. Well, why don't we get, just get a boat? get to the volcano from the coast. Well, do... That's the whole reason that we even have contact with Selter, right? Yeah. Well, we have like a water because... boat. That's what I meant. Because I if mean, you guys yes. don't want to talk with Selter, I don't mind talking with Selter. Selter likes me. Were we going to go to the monastery at some point? What for? I don't remember. I just remember I that we were going to go to the monastery. Uh, Gaspard <laughs> said that he had, he had his, uh, 
Doc Brown flux capacitor revelation moment at the monastery uh, in regards to the Kyberners and uh, which also led to the Jackson. Yeah, I think the idea behind the monastery was that we were going to learn more about like the giant statues and how we could make use of them or that we would learn like more about I don't know, that we would learn more things that we could then know. I don't know, it depends. Do you think Grimhilda is going to spring something real soon? Like, is she, are we racing her to the volcano, or is she just kind of I doing think stuff? the sooner the better, because if we get there before she does, then, then we have an opportunity to stop her. But if she's already started whatever it is that she's doing... Yeah. But what if we get there and she's not there yet? Then we wait. And if we get there and she's already there, then we're in trouble. Yeah. That's also true. But that would still be better than getting there. Like, not not at all. I don't know. It just... um. I've kind of gone about preparing some things today that might actually be helpful in that regard, so something that's a little bit more natural. Oh, what do you mean? Like, should we need to, I don't know, split the earth with an earthquake? Yeah, last time we did that, this town kind of got ruined. Now we're building North Merriam. I mean, I kind of wanted to do that anyways, but still. But better to be prepared. But yeah, I I don't like the idea of her starting whatever she is going to start. We catch her in the middle or at, or at the end and she's already successful. I don't like the idea of her having to jump on us. Well, why don't we just ask Seltzer to take us? Uh, if we give her something shiny, she'll she'll probably take us without a complaint. Well, she'll I mean, still complain, but she'll take us. I mean, that was my thought. Okay. You're the one that's gonna have to make nice with her, though. That's fine. She's... If she wants us to, to, to defeat the Sky Shadow Leviathan, she has to be nice. Otherwise, we could just say no. That's true. Besides, I don't know what kind of creature Selter is at this point. You know, she's just Selter. <laughs> I mean, just Selter is kind of a big statement in and of itself. Yeah. Selter I mean, I... is Selter. You count them like Selters. One Selter, and that's it, because there's no more Selters. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's kind of my plan. I, I I don't know if we're gonna be able to even get the the statues to to move. That seems like something that Gaspard would know more about. And if and if he's stumped, then what? Are, how are we gonna help? Well, I don't think we're supposed to make the statues into Kyburners. I think that was that's a square peg in a round hole. I think that the statues are operated using some other means. You think they're machines? I thought they might be machines, but I don't think they are. I think they're intended to be animated by some kind of earth magic. I got the distinct impression that they were to tell a story when Maybe, we were but there. 
But we know all the stories, don't we? I mean, is there any more stories they can tell us? Well, maybe there are. That's the thing, when you don't know the story, you don't know that you know the need to know the story. Yeah, the... Selene and I hiked up there with someone from the Six Landlords. And he basically told us the story of a, the difference. It's almost as if, like, there's stages. Like, there's the stages of, in, of loss, of grief or something. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of smaller statues of, like, smaller people, but the the idea behind the larger ones was, was that. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I don't know what, I mean, the six landlords people might know more about when these things were created and what they were intended for, but I don't think even they know. Do you know how old they are? Centuries. Do you know how many centuries? I don't think that were expressed. Mm. They're old. At least the start of the construction on them was old. And people just kept creating and carving them out because that's what they did. Whether or not that's what their intentions were initially. I mean, we can't know that unless we talk to the the people who constructed them. Yeah. Were any of those people elves by any chance? Someone that might still be alive? I don't know. Hmm. Or someone who if Selene's prepared the right spells today we can speak with dead if we yeah, know the burial site but we'd need to find a corpse we would Yeah, it was just tieflings who lived at the Six Landlords site. Okay. So probably nobody's still alive that remembers. Probably not. I mean, the way that he told the story was... The Six Landlords don't have names. They're just concepts. Maybe that's their names. So. It's definitely something that I would want to explore more of, but I don't... I don't want to spend too much time on something that might be a dead end. Yeah. Okay, well, um, if we need to get ready to go to the volcano, then I'll get ready to, to, um, I'll prepare my spells of not burning up. Hmm. <laughs> That's ideal. And possibly other spells of burning up. Me too. Same. That is what I have prepared today. Okay.
So we're calling Seltzer? Yeah, if you'd like, go ahead. I am going to cast Sending. I'll be over here. And inform Send of Seltzer that we need a pickup. Alright. Uh, you would actually be contacting DJ. Okay, DJ. Seltzer is not traditionally reached. But DJ is your contact with her. Okay. Then mm -hmm. I contact DJ and say, hey, we need a ride to no, the I say hi. And Norlize says hi. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're teaching him well, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the traditional lady in all sendings. <laughs> Anything worth saying in 25 words is worth saying in 22. You make room for what's important. <laughs> hey, thanks, bye is one word. Mm. I'll allow that. I'll allow a <laughs> okay, thanks, bye to be one. <laughs> it's a, a, a gnome tradition. Yep, there we go. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I will accept this being gnomish. <laughs> See, y'all come for the lore. We're learning. We're learning together. Uh, Alright, so you... Um, uh, you let... Uh, let's see. You let that sending off to DJ. Uh, DJ will reply... DJ will... Uh, Reply not immediately. Uh, I mean, he could be busy, or he could be needing to actually talk to Selter about it. Uh, but you will, uh, you will later in that day get a reply back from DJ. Uh, his voice and uh, pronunciation is unmistakable, and uh, he tells you that uh, they'll have to meet you. He'll give you a location, uh, just simply because the Repentless is a uh, kind of a persona itself, a persona non grata. Uh, mm. They say that they can actually get you in three days' time, because uh, there's currently uh, they are elsewhere and they're going to need some time. Uh, but that they can meet you, uh, they can meet you further south because there's not a lot of towns and other activity here. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll give you a location uh, where th they can pick you up, where the Repentless won't have won't be harassed by uh, Shadahar or Mesomaskin uh, patrols or ships or just uh, you know getting a lot of people unnecessarily rowdy because the Repentless is very obvious and very scary. Yes, yes, it is <laughs> very. Alright. So, yep, if and you want the repent list, we'll you gotta wait three days. Then I suppose that's what we'll do. Okay. Probably should have called her earlier. Well, we didn't know she was busy. Oh, hmm. uh, by the way, DJ does uh, congratulate you for your wedding. Apparently, he was able to know or pick up that you got wed, but he did include that in his reply back to you. Okay. Hmm. That's a little creepy. How he knew that? Because I didn't say anything yet. I don't know. I didn't tell him. <laughs> Almost reflexively, Norlite chips in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a... That's a thing. Well, it's not going to take us three days to get to that location, is it? Uh, if or you walk, it? but you don't have to. I have a lot and we can fuck. That's a valid question.
So if Norlai wants to provide air transportation, you already have the, the custom fabricated carriage that Bright whipped together. Mm -hmm. uh, you could take that. Or if you just want to hit the road as a, a party together, sort of dip back into uh, a time that feels like really long ago, but in all reality wasn't. Uh, you could just hit the road and travel along the travel along the coast here. How long would it take us by air? Uh, it would. When I say a day, I don't mean twenty four hours. Like probably like eight hours, like a day of flying, like an eight hour eight hour or so of flying. But we don't have to go immediately. We can stay in town and get ready. Okay. What do we need to get ready? Who knows? Maybe we should get some supplies instead of, you know, running off with nothing. Might not be a bad idea to get some, like, potions or something. Might not be a bad idea. Especially for fire resistance. If we're going to an actual volcano. Yeah, that might be... <laughs> My piece is mine. Um, let's see, actually. Yeah, because if I were to cast protection from energy, I can only do that on one person, so we're going to probably need some potions. Especially if we want to concentrate on other things. Yeah, maybe. I I'm a gnomish torch, so I don't really need them. But, uh... <laughs> I could always... I don't know, I probably won't use them. But it doesn't hurt to have them. Well, I have noticed that... I'm far more vulnerable to fire than I used to be. So... Oh, I'm, I'm the normal resistance of a normal tiefling. I'm not a normal tiefling anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like, what, one percent something? I'm not one part unknown. Like one percent uh, elf, and ninety-nine percent something else. <laughs> yeah. I don't know exactly what that is. But apparently, Selene and I are similar? in that regard? I don't know. Well, fire resistance potions for myself and Selene then. And Mordecai is gonna go looking for some potions of healing and fire resistance. Okay, we can go shopping. That's what he wants to go find. Uh, yeah, the only thing that I wanted to go shopping for, and I don't know if we got this, was uh, Tensor's floating disc. It was the only thing. I don't remember if we ever found it. I I don't believe that you got a scroll of that. At any okay. Okay. Uh, so if you want to go spell shopping while there's some potion shopping going on? Yeah, that's the only thing. Okay. And it's just level one, so I should be able to jot that down into my spell book with no trouble. I mean, I might as well go see if there's any more animal figurines. <laughs> more pets? I can always use more pets. And I'm also going to go and get um, some more, a couple more diamonds for Revivify. Ah, okay. Most of us are playing D&D, but Norlai's playing Pokemon. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Gotta catch them all. Look, it's like in Smash Brothers. I stand in the background and the monsters fight. <laughs>
All right, so we, uh, we're we in a major city here, uh, so it's not going to take a work week to try and find a magic item. Um, now, it's not like there's, you know, just, there's not like Walmart. It's like, oh, yeah, you want artifacts? Just go to aisle, aisle five or anything, but you're not asking for that. Uh, we're looking for some different uh, potions. Resistance is only an uncommon, <laughs> um, and so there would be uh, different uh, concoctions uh, that, uh, that could be found. Um, on the uh, uncommon tier, um, finding the level one spell uh, won't necessarily be difficult to do either. Uh, let's. let's see. There's the page. Let me have a... Uh, from Mordecai, since you're the one uh, going uh, potion shopping here. Uh, I would like you to make a... Uh, I'd like you to make an investigation, please. And uh, you you are going out with Celine, so the two of you can be uh, poking around here uh, together. Hmm. Um, so you can make an investigation at advantage uh, because you two are looking for uh, a potion shop or places where you can buy these. Either six or eight. Okay. Gross. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, in the uh, uh, there's a, a place that does sell them, uh, and they do have a limited selection. Uh, of, uh, I mean, fire is, is rather, uh, rather common, even though there are many tieflings that live here. There are also, uh, humans that, uh, that do live here, or just even, uh, others who might enjoy, um, not being, uh, not being caught on fire, uh, in different ways here. So, are you looking specifically for just fire, or are you looking for other types? No, just fire. Okay. Uh, then... There... If we need something else, then I can tack I can do protection from energy, but at, yeah. for our, for fire, for fire, I want potions specifically. All right. So taking the day and scouring around uh, different places, uh, investigating uh, different leads, because it seems like there's a lot of potions that have been out. There's been a lot of supply line uh, supply line disruptions. Um, just things are things are happening. Uh, clearly, clearly no. Uh, real life connection to our current state of supply chain management, um, and that's an absolute lie. But yeah, so a lot of shipments are held up, or there's been a lot of runs on things. Uh, so unfortunately, you're not uh, you're not able to find maybe as many as you could have hoped for. Um, but fire is available because that is a more common type, and uh, I'm going to say that uh, within the uh, within the time frame you're working to go meet the Repentless, um, there are going to be... Uh, make a persuasion with this, too, to see if this could... Uh, if, if you might be able to see if there's a, a couple more that would be available. Oh, my. All right. Uh, so, Mordecai, yeah, you... Uh, you know, you're like, oh, come on, like the, 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 this isn't that. Uh, I don't know what you'd want to tell them, uh, but you're able to uh, you're able to get them to uh, incentivize them enough uh, to come off of a, uh, a sort of a, a reserve supply that this person was keeping for himself. Mm. Um, so he's not using them, but he has them as as his own. Uh, but so if you're willing to pay a little bit extra for him to come off of what is his emergency supply, then um, you can have uh, you can have a couple more made available to you. Uh, so we'll raise the minimum up. Uh, go ahead. Let's, let's have the minimum. Okay. So I want you to roll uh, d6 plus three, and that's how many fire potions are going to be available for you to buy from anyone who is uh, anyone who is uh, any kind of a business selling them. Okay. So.
so he will uh, he will abide by the uh, by the stated cost on those first two potions. Um, and then you will make a, a private deal with him for those remaining three. Uh, they are just uncommons, so that's between 101 and 500. Uh, so go ahead and roll a uh, roll a d6, and if you want to use one of your... Uh, I will say in this instance, uh, it would be kind of a plus one, but I'll, instead it'll be a minus one to see what the, the multiplier would end up being on the d6. You can use one of your Fickle God's favors. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and do a d6 minus one. Oh, all right then. Call me a one. All right. Uh, so you're able to get, uh, you're able to get two potions at a hundred each. Okay. And then uh, his reserve, uh, he would just ask for double. So uh, that passed on. Uh, so then you could get three more for two hundred each. Okay, deal. All right, there's that. And that, uh, and potions of healing? Okay, uh, there, there is uh, a run on those. They're, they are mm. available, just intrinsically you will find them. Uh, but they're going to be just more expensive. So you can find any tier pretty much for sure, but they will be more expensive because of the disasters going on right now. Um, so which uh, which potions would you like? Um, I think for the time being, just... regular like four regular if we can just the the uncommon tier ones yeah okay uh then go ahead and uh we will roll again uh this is uh this is going to be a uh d3 plus one if you want to spend another one of your points to negate that one you can and just roll a d3 yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Check. So just roll a d3, and... Oof. All right. So, uh, apparently there's a, a pinch right now. Um, so the uncommon tier, uh, the regular, the basic healing potions, uh, are going to be 300 apiece. Hmm. That's a lot for just, like, what is yeah. it, 2d4 or something? Yeah, that's a yeah, lot. Is. Nothing. Yeah. I have a flat patch. You do. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that then. Just pass on those. Okay. But they're that expensive. Yep, there's a lot of people in need of uh, of healing and restoration right now in the recovery efforts. Uh, following the undead attack and the earthquake and everything. Yeah. Maybe we should be trying to make those. No idea you know how to make potions. Make what? Do you know how to make potions? No. Hmm. I can always try. I don't really know <laughs> how to do Yeah, just just try based on nothing. That'd be great. <laughs> I mean, if we get some wild magic flowers and grind them up and add water to it, it's probably going to do something. It'll certainly do something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just wondered. Maybe uh, maybe it would be something you would know how to do. Okay. Um, well, then, in that case... I don't know any alchemists. Yeah. I don't know alchemy myself, either. Uh, well, I'm, uh, we, know, we know one. But, uh... Maybe, maybe we don't want to take him away from his, his normal work, so, okay. Alright, well, 
we'll just have to make do. Healing potions are more kind of a something for an emergency's sake, but you know, that's not something we can get. That we'll just have to we'll just have to be very mindful of uh, yeah. how many spell slots us clerics use. Well, and I, and I have life transference if I if I need it. I haven't been preparing it a lot lately because it just hasn't come up. But same. If, we, yeah. if we're expecting to go into combat, maybe I don't know. I would I would use it. Mm -hmm. Bright says I have it in my book. Do you have it prepared? I have it in my book. If that helps. <laughs> Sometimes I open the book to that page and just kind of <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Yeah, that's but I don't like really practice it. One day and then realize, nah. <laughs> that's not one that I prepare very often either, so. <laughs> I mean, I just had that experience with Doc. I've been preparing it and carrying it around though since for like forever, for like a hundred sessions, and finally I get to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and what a payoff. And yeah, I think that's I think that's what we need to prepare. Uh, I think Celine is kitted well enough, right? What is I don't know what her current. I would like to look for another pet. Uh yes. Uh, I will. I'll take on your magic uh, shopping journey in just a moment. <laughs> Uh, Tensors is a level one spell, uh, so yeah, you can find it. Um, uh, Bright, go ahead and roll a d6. Okay. A two. Two. All right. Uh, it costs 200 gold. It's probably worth it. Plus another 50 gold to write it into my book, I guess. I'll oh, yeah, because it's not a new divination. Fun. Yeah. I've, I've always been bad at con. That's conjuration, right? Not evocation. I've always been bad at conjuration. <laughs> Alright. I have calculated that into. from our powder funds. Okay. 250 gold. Okay, that's not too bad. Unless you already had, like, ink and everything to cover the cost, but I... Uh, no, I, I left my ink in hell. Huh. Valid. <laughs> Alright. Then that covers the cost of your tensors and putting it in your book. Uh, Alright, so we have a spell. Uh, and, and for such a, a nice utility spell as well, uh, th that might explain why it's a little bit more expensive right now, because people are looking to haul a bunch of things. Um, and uh, so now let's go over to Norali. Uh, Norali, you're browsing for... Now, there's all kinds of uh, mundane art pieces, uh, especially ones that feature animals that don't live in Mesotopia because these are imports from Shadahar. Uh, so you're seeing some different animals that are native to the Northeast. Um, as for something magical, uh, go ahead and roll an investigation as you're spending your time uh, asking around, just browsing, window shopping, looking for uh, something along those lines. Do I have any plus ones? Uh... You, DM Celine, DM Bright. Yes, you do have a uh, coffee cat. Uh, gave you a Norali plus one. You want to use that? I will use it. All right, it is cashed in. Oh <laughs> no! Oh no! Uh, all right, so uh, that that's a red number for all of you. Uh, you can't see our chat for your all's protection. It's actually behind the chat that you can see as fickle gods. Uh, but that is a red number, uh, signifying a one. Uh, but you do get to add a plus one, so that becomes that three that's right next to your two. Um, 
So besides mundane stuff and some very exquisite mundane, like there's like wooden carvings that even have like uh, a little pelt made of the fur that the animal's supposed to be. Uh, there's uh, jewel encrusted things. There's items made of uh, precious metals and stones and whatnot. But you're not finding. Like this. It's a it's a weird creature. It's called a penguin. <laughs> it's a bird, but it can't fly. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, say so if you want a jewel encrusted penguin, um, then uh, then you can do that, or uh, you could probably even find a, a little uh, a Shadahar uh, tinkerer, like a, a toy seller, has one where a bunch of these little penguins uh, seem to go up an automatic set of steps, and they slide down a and they slide down a slide and get right back in line to go up the little set of steps, and then they slide back down. <laughs> uh, but there is unfortunately for you uh, no no magical. Uh, animals, um, or at least maybe not the type you're looking for. Uh, th there are probably some that would be like a nightlight to a child, where it might glow softly, so it might be able to produce light for an hour after you, you know, tap its head or something. Uh, but nothing that would turn into an animal or have um, something like that. All right. I'm gonna buy this penguin. All right. Here <laughs> Are you buying a jewel encrusted penguin, or are you buying the penguin toy? Uh, jewel encrusted. Okay. Oh, damn. Well, <laughs> <laughs> has discovered the expensive tastes. He has. That, that old know. noble background coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh, let's go over here, and. Okay, uh, a jewel encrusted penguin uh, you can acquire for uh, seven hundred fifty gold uh, as an art object. Uh, though there oh. is, there is more common a two hundred and fifty gold one, but it, it's not as encrusted. It's just precious metal. So it's the same penguin, but one has gems in it, and the other one doesn't. Can I make a side of hand check to steal it? You can. Yes. I won't stop you. Hot damn. Uh, I would just say that I have clubs of thievery, so there's a five added to this. Well, okay. shit. <laughs> oh, it's a big old host. Yeah. Hello, raiders. Uh, Stellar Manx. And uh, is coming in with a raid from Magrion DM. Uh, howdy to hey. you, Raven. Thank you for the uh, shout out. Welcome back. They raided on uh, Sunday. Yes, Ma uh, Magrion. Uh, uh, Magrion, uh, and I, it was a, I think it was on Saturday, on Friday or Saturday before. Uh, and uh, Mag uh, Magrion uh, said that uh, he would come over and give us a look. I was telling him about our game on Tuesdays. and uh, So thank you for stopping by after playing Detroit Become Human. Um, okay. Well, I rolled a 32. Yes. <laughs> you pocket the expensive penguin. As far as you know, like, no one's no one's appearing and saying ma'am or anything along those lines. You're making your way out of the store? Um, I want to also purchase something that is like less than 100 gold. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh, there's, um, there are, there are things, uh, there are more common things that, uh, only cost, uh, 25 gold pieces to 100 gold pieces. What are you like looking for? Like a small for? penguin figurine of a common metal. Okay. 
Hmm. Maybe not a penguin. What other animals are there? What else is native to a, a winter country? Uh, oh, so like a little ar arctic fox? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get a little less than 100 gold arctic fox figure. Sure. Uh, there's an arctic fox that car it's uh, carved out of some kind of bone and polished. Ooh. I will get this. Now we'll purchase it. Okay. So you go up and you part with your you part with your gold. Mm -hmm. Is that out of party funds? Yes. <laughs> of course. Thank you for the gift, Mordecai. <laughs> Look, I was holding on to the party funds for a whole year. <laughs> And they're technically my funds. You just decided you wanted to calculate it again. <laughs> uh, so you, you're going through this rather uh, upscale store. There, there's a lot of very precious things. Uh, you were greeted upon coming in. Uh, you you browse. You pocket the jewel-encrusted penguin. And uh, you make your way up, though, with a, a polished bone arctic fox. Uh, the person who greeted you is a very, uh, very well-dressed, very gentlemanly-looking uh, tiefling, and uh, he uh, he looks at the fox and looks at you. Interesting choice. This is uh, an import from Shadowhar. Uh, they have these creatures known as foxes, particularly an arctic fox, and I was able to acquire this off of... And he goes a little bit into this piece that he remembers how he got. He can uh, he can describe the circumstances. And if I can ask, what caught your interest about this? Uh, well, it, uh, despite it being like made of bone, it looks really fluffy. Like the carving's really nice, mm -hmm. and the detail on the eyes they they added like a little bit of paint on the eyes is really nice as well. A very fine and touch. It kind of looks like a doggy, but I, it's not a doggy because it's a fox. But I have never seen a fox before. It's really cute. Yes, the the animals from the Shadahar Empire are rather exotic. Uh, there's all manner. Uh, there's a type of a bird that doesn't even fly. It just, it just swims. Uh, none is a penguin. Yeah, I, 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 I saw the little toy over there. Oh, yes. Uh, apparently, the Shadahar might have something for it. There's all, there's all manner. In fact, I have several different tiers of penguins. Uh, but I, I like the fox. I used to have um, I used to have this little um, onyx dog that it would have looked really cute next to, but someone decided to leave it somewhere they shouldn't have. I see. Yeah, so I'll have to get one of those again eventually. Young ma'am. Uh... Mm -hmm. I I wonder if I've met you before. Um, hmm. Well, I've been to a few, like, galas around. Uh, I run the Orphanarium that's currently being built. Oh, yes. Well, now that you mention that, uh, yes, uh, I... That does seem familiar. No, I believe... I, I couldn't help but notice your rack of horns. And, uh, it's a pattern that... <sighs> and he's he's just kind of quietly uh, looking you over, and his eyes do uh, dart up to... Uh, his eyes do dart up to your, uh, your unique horns. You have a brother, do you not? Uh, yeah. Um, his name's Lucky Adius. I just call him Lucky. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I was thinking maybe Rory or something. Not Lucky. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, your parents. Your parents were... Uh, well, then my parents aren't really around anymore, so. Hmm. 
you you probably if you did meet them it would have been a long time ago. Yes, it must have been. Uh must have been. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've seen those horns around before and anyway. Well, enjoy your fox. Is there anything else that I can do for you? Oh, no, just this. Hmm. She, she just kind of looks over at another shelf for a minute. No, just this for now. All right. Well, thank you for your business. And I thank hope you. that you enjoy your fox. Uh, thank you for the good and moral work you're doing for the city with the orphanarium. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I really care about orphans, um, mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, I, well, I, I don't want to get into it, but, uh, I, I understand how they feel, so I want to help them. I see. Well, someone has to set a good example for the people in the city. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'll be going now. Alright. And she walks out with her fox. Yep. You approach the door. You open the door. You start to pass through the door. Why did I say start to pass through the door? I'm not stopping you from passing through the door. However, uh, as you do from a uh, from a little engraved owl that's perched above uh, there are some lights that begin to shine from its eyes and <laughs> it begins emitting an alarm interesting interesting development <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going invisible. All right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Arcane security systems, y'all. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> if you're a, a highfalutin art dealer. Uh, so yeah. Uh, all right. You turn invisible, and I presume finish slipping through the door. Yeah. So that I hear loud noise. I disappear. <laughs> and all right. right. Um. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and make an acrobatics as you dash out, trying not to bonk into people. Okay, 15? 15. Alright, uh, I mean, for average people shopping, especially if they're stopping and uh, gawking... I could also about... just fly straight up if possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, people are stopping and gawking, you kind of, like, get out of their way before you, you fly off. Okay. I'm gone. Yep. I'm gone. I have an hour to go wherever. I'm gone. <laughs> so, you have your two items. Mordecai, you have some potions. Right, yep. you have a spell. Yeah. What are you doing in the evening? Uh, I'm gonna put... I'm gonna put the fox on a nice shelf mm -hmm. in the orphanarium. Uh, and I'm going to keep the penguin on me. Okay. We'll put it on display where no one will ever notice. Aside from that, nothing going on with with uh, with Mordecai. Very well. Uh, as dinner is served at the under construction orphanarium, there is a very stern knock on the front door. It has some visibility again. <laughs> and I'm leaving. I go to answer the door, 
And I'm very, very curious now as to why Norali suddenly disappeared. I'm eating my food and I look up and everyone is gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you answer the door. Uh, as you open the door, you see that there are uh, several constables of the city uh, of the city guard uh, who are at the door. And uh, they're asking after Norali, uh, who is accused of shoplifting a very expensive jewel-encrusted animal. Uh, the store owner described the thief as being the person who has been at a lot of balls and galas, and as a uh, person who uh, is helping to construct the orphanarium. And they go on to describe her as being purple and having an interesting rack of six horns, uh, two of them bent backwards and then two smaller uh, nubs uh, hooking up through her hair behind. Does this person sound familiar to you, sir? Yes. She's like a little sister to me. Ah. Well, your little sister uh, is accused of stealing a very expensive thing. Some sticky fingers on that one, I suppose. She was here, but she has gone and disappeared. I see. Well, she has the, uh, the shopkeep has instructed us to either bring her in, or she can return the item, or she can buy the item. And in those last two cases, she can make a public apology. Otherwise, pub- she is wanted, and the city is going to be uh, on the on the lookout for her. And that's going to perhaps hamper the continued construction of this place, as it's become an yes. active crime scene. Yes, completely understandable. Now, that would certainly attract my attention. I'm probably not going to get up, but I would say, I think the store is the crime scene. Not here. Just so you know. We do have a warrant to come in and examine her room. That's not necessary. I pull out... I pull out my bag of coin. How much? Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to just message... Uh, no, don't do that. I'm. I'll, I'll. I'll take it back. Just. How much? Uh, one moment. Uh, he pulls out the he pulls out the search warrant that has a complaint written on it, and uh, he shows you that there is a an owl valued at seven hundred and fifty gold. Or not an owl. A uh, the owl was the alarm. Uh, a penguin, uh, described as a flightless bird that swims. Uh, jewel encrusted, worth seven fifty, uh, not including any sort of taxes or other things. Um, I have several items to offer in trade. I'm not here to trade. I'm I'm here to enforce the law. An option was that I can collect the money and return it to the uh, to the jeweler. Hmm. I can collect Norali. Fine. I... I will fish over, fish over the money. No. I'll fish out 750 gold. No. And pay the man. Let's see. I will make, I will make sure that she knows that a public apology is required of her. Uh, there's kind of like a, it, it would be like a receipts, like slash, like a, a coupon to show that the payment's been made that's torn off of the warrant and given to you uh, so that when it's served they can see that uh, an action has been taken and the money's been received uh, Mm -hmm. on behalf. So, uh, she, this is in partial payment. We're still going to be looking for her until she makes an apology. uh, That was a condition put forward to not press, uh, to not press charges. The charges must be pressed until the other part of the payment has been made. 
She'll make her appearance. No worry. Don't worry. That's punishment enough. Very well. Uh, there are other people who are facing uh, a uh, public shaming. Uh, and he's going to give a part of the public square where people are brought forward to... Uh, not like public execution. We, the city hasn't devolved into anything like that, but where others are put forward to you know, give them a bit of a razzing and an embarrassment in front of others uh, as a, a way to societally correct them. Uh, and that they're, they're showing that they want to be better people in the future. There's public accountability. So you're given a, a place where people who've had this as part of a parole or uh, as some sort of a uh, other uh, service, uh, like a public service is given. So she can offer her apology on uh, she can offer apology tomorrow at this time. Sounds fair. I would like to go back to the store and hide the penguin inside to make it look like I'm being accused for something I didn't get. <laughs> sure. That is fun. Okay. So you fly uh, out while this is going on? I'm, I'm flying out. Uh, I'm heading just straight back to the store. I'm still invisible. Yep. Uh, the store is closed. It is nighttime. You're having dinner. Mm. Are there windows to this? Yeah. Are there owls posted at these windows? Yes. Are the owls just looking at as far as you know, the owls are just stone sculptures set into the uh, set into the building. Now, the one the one was making quite a ruckus. Uh, the other ones could be something, or they could just be decorative. I would like to misty step inside, put the the penguin like on the ground. Uh, like, un like, not on the ground in front, but like slightly under the shelf it was at. Okay. Make it look like it fell there, and then Misty step out. Okay. Uh, so, uh, well, I do need you to roll a D100, please, as you Misty step. Uh, I'll also need a D20 roll, too. go to Misty Step and uh, in that moment everything goes black as things uh, become horrifying uh, as just this um, just tendrils everywhere uh, appear and uh, just a, an alien feeling uh, overcomes you. Uh, uh, one of the tendrils reaches out for you and seems to, like, it tries to wrap around, but your leg can uh, move through it without being uh, bound up in it. And when your spell ends, you are in front of the bakery across the street that you had stopped by before going to the jeweler, uh, because they were they had some very fresh cookies that smelled good, and you're standing in front of that window. This is new. I would like to try again. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll another d20. Oh, 
Okay, no wild magic. Unless you want wild magic to happen, you can always cause it. Um, all right, roll another percentile. Uh, okay, you go to, uh, you try to misty step uh, inside. Once more, uh, the cloying black tendrils um, seem to screech, but they're also silent. So how are you hearing something that's making no noise? But there's just this reverberation through your body that's like a fork on a plate or nails on a chalkboard kind of a thing where you don't even have to hear it. You can just feel this unpleasant vibration passing through your body. Um, and uh, as your misty step resolves, um, you find yourself in front of another nearby storefront that you remember looking into the window of. And the tendrils did try to grab you, but were, you were able to slip through them very easily. I'm going to walk back up to the window. Okay. Make sure no one's around. I should still be invisible. No, no he has to be invisible. Yeah, I'm no longer invisible. Okay. Um, I am going to chuck the penguin into the window <laughs> and then cast <laughs> mending to fix it. All right, now mending isn't an immediate thing. You're gonna have to like spend minutes at a time trying to put the glass back together. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's, mending it's isn't a, a minute, it's a minute casting time. If I turn myself invisible, can, can, will I be invisible throughout the entirety of mending? Uh, I don't believe you can cast... Well, you can cast it now. By, by rule, though, you would lose your invisibility as soon as you start. Because it breaks your concentration when you cast a new spell. Um, that's what I was There's no one around? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see, you left during dinner time. Yeah, th this is a more upscale part. I, I will say that there are some people around. This isn't exactly like a restaurant district. Uh, and a lot of the stores are closed, uh, since they've, they've done the majority of their, um, of their selling, uh, in the daylight hours. Uh, I will say that there are a handful of people. No one's immediately near you, but there are other people who are... Maybe walking to another block, or they're walking home, something along those lines. Uh, there are some characters right. going back and forth every once in a while. I'm going to go invisible again. Okay. Uh, and just wait on the roof of the building until no one is around. Okay, roll a d20. Okay, not a one. Uh, sure. Invisible, you fly up to the roof. You are... Wait. i wait for the data point. Okay. Uh, the... The dead of night is gonna be more... Uh, you're gonna, uh, you'll have to re-up your, your invisibility if you want to stay Done. invisible up there. Uh, because you were, this was around dinner time uh, after places had closed. Uh, so you actually, you probably still have about another hour of daylight until sunset because again you're in the you are in the middle of summer this is just a little bit after midsummer here um so yeah uh you will have um, to, you'll you'll be having to cast uh, several invisibilities up there is there someone somewhere up here I could hide yeah oh yeah there's uh there's uh, uh chimneys and whatnot you could probably just lean against and the birds might see you up there but as far as you know, no one else is up on the roofs. Alright, I'm just... I'm gonna hide up here. Okay, sure. Uh, go ahead and make a stealth. As you try and uh, find a optimal position. Alright, I'll start this. Okay. 
So, as far as you're concerned, you've done a good job uh, finding a, a little area to wedge yourself into, uh, so you're out of sight, and it's just you and the birds and the setting sun for a while. Uh, meanwhile, back at the Orphanarium, uh, Bright, Mordecai, slash Selene, Norlai's nowhere to be seen. Well, that was a good dinner. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll conjure up Betty to have her clean up the dishes and so on. That's the sort of thing that I would probably do most of the time. Just off screen. <laughs> 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 and, uh... Hey, has anyone seen Norlai? Nope. Not since dinner started. Uh, and so Mordecai is going to cast Sending. So, you had to pay... How many golds for... What did she... She stole what? She stole a gem-encrusted statue of a bird. Called a penguin? It's a weird name. Oh. Man. It's a very weird name. But, uh... Oh, yeah, we've, we've got some... We've got some birds like that in, in Oct. Yeah. Uh... She's accused of that. I don't know okay. if it's true. I paid for it because if... If she did, in fact, do so... <sighs> She's a collector of little figurines anyway. Yeah. 750 well. gold is a lot. So, but she's only accused of stealing. Yep. Oh, that's not as... Her. Yeah, it's... And really, she just has to... As it's part a... of it, go up in front of people and say, Yes, I stole from the community. Well, that's, that's still a lot of money. I mean, we could do a lot with 750 gold. It seemed like the quickest and easiest way to get where to just deal with the problem. Well, um, I don't, I don't have sending prepared today, so I, I can't, I can't send anything to her. But if you, I do want to, okay. And so Mordecai is sending to Norlai. It says. You disappeared at dinner. Uh, where are you? At the end of the message. Don't don't forget to say the K. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. There we go. There's eight words. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't have paid the cops. Never deal with cops. How could you? Hey, okay, thanks, bye. He's going to cast another sending. Please come home. We'll talk about this. I'll be waiting up. And that's all. That's where he'll he'll leave it. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to Norlai. What's Norlai doing? I'm not going in front of all those people and saying I stole something. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yes, you should have asked me first. I 
and he's just going to be waiting in the front of the orphanarium, wherever the front room is, in a chair, waiting for her to come home. All right, then what we'll do, uh, while you're waiting, uh, Norlai uh, has a decision to make, and or is waiting for the sun to set and people to clear. Uh, we have Mordecai, Selene, and Bright at the orphanarium. We'll take a break here, everyone. Uh, we'll be gone for about 10, 15 minutes to refresh ourselves. So you all get something to drink or eat or uh, whatever you got to do. Um, and uh, we'll be back. If any of you have uh, any bits that you want to throw in, uh, keep an eye on the break screen as you'll get a fun little effect. Uh, keep an eye on Bright's uh, cupcake. And uh, yeah, I'll see you back here in uh, about 15 minutes, everyone as we resolve what happens with our, our miscreant tiefling here.